Welcome to video 86 in series 3, and in this video I'll demonstrate how to make the enemy run away. Okay, so this was actually requested by someone, and I thought, yeah, it would be a good opportunity to show how you would expand the systems uh, to accept a new behavior like that. So I'll do it, I'll go through it pretty quickly, I'll just copy and paste code to speed things up. In the enemy master script, I'll add three new events. Two of the general event handler type. So one here is event enemy health low, and one is event enemy health recovered. I'll also copy in another health event handler, this time event enemy increase health, because I want to demonstrate that when the enemy's health falls too low, they start to run away, but when it goes above a, above a certain threshold, then they'll stop running away. Okay, so I'll paste in the methods. So this is the call event enemy increase health, pass in a parameter of int, and uh, it just simply calls the event enemy increase health. Okay, next are the uh, other two events that I just made. So call event enemy health low, and that just simply calls the event enemy health low, and also a call event enemy health recovered and that just calls event enemy health recover. Okay, so I also need to edit the health script to account for these health increase, and also checking the health level, so as to, you know, fire off those events of when the enemy health is too low, or whether it's recovered. So I'll put in a new variable, and it's a private health low. I'll put that as public. So it can be set in the inspector. Okay, and then I have some new methods to put in. First of all, void check health fraction. So if the enemy health has fallen below health low, and still their health is greater than zero, so the enemy hasn't died, then call that event enemy health low. Uh, otherwise, if their health is greater than health low, then call the event that their health has recovered. Okay, and I also need some way of actually increasing uh, the player's health. So I'll just have this new method here, which will actually increase the enemy's health. And uh, here we go. If the enemy health is greater than 100, you could put here maximum health and write that up above. Make it exposed to the inspector so that it's not 100. It's up to you what you'd like to do there. Okay. So going back up in deduct health, I need to add that new method call, check health fraction. So it'll call this new method here. And I'll need to subscribe. Okay, so I've just subscribed the increase health method to event enemy increase health. And that should do it for the health script. So now the enemy's health can be increased. And if it falls too low, a special event gets fired off. Okay, so now I need to make a new script. So I'll call it enemy nav flee. And just to open that up. And I've got quite a few new variables. So public bool is fleeing, private enemy master, enemy master, private nav mesh agent, my nav mesh agent, private nav mesh hit, nav hit, Private transform, my transform, public transform, flee target, private vector 3, run position, private vector 3, direction to player, public float, free range, a uh, flee range rather, 25 I set there, probably should be higher since this is an FPS sort of game, and private float, check rate, private float, next check. Now I won't need the start method, so I'll get rid of that, and I'll need quite a few more methods. This isn't all of them. So first of all, void set flee target. It requires a parameter of the type transform. I'll just call it target. So flee target is equal to target. Then here two methods. Void I should flee. And this sets the is fleeing flag to true. And it just checks if uh, there is an enemy nav pursue script attached. If there is, it'll disable it. It sets enable to false. And that'll stop the enemy from pursuing the player. So now this script's behavior can take over. 
and avoid I should stop fleeing, then the flag is fleeing is set to false, and then enemy nav pursue script is enabled. Alright, now here's another method, bool flee target, we'll call it in another method soon enough. This is a lot like the wonder script, where I had that boolean, it's almost the same thing except it's a bit simpler, and it just outputs a vector 3, that's all it does, it doesn't require any special inputs. And what it does, first of all, is it calculates the direction to the player, it's just a direction vector, so my transform.position minus flea target.position, then I've just got this temporary variable, check position, is equal to my transform.position plus direction to player. So that'll create a new position that is away from us and away from uh, the enemy. So the enemy will have a new point that's in line between uh, them and us, away from us. Okay, and then uh, moving on, then all I do is I just check the nav mesh. So if nav mesh dot sample position, that check position, out nav hit. So can I navigate there? Uh, and then the area to check, 1, and nav mesh dot all areas, check all areas, then the result is equal to nav hit dot position, and it's returned true, and in another method, which you'll soon see, we'll make use of that. Otherwise, just return my transform dot position, return false, actually, this will do nothing, and the enemy would just stand still. So let me paste in this other method. Void check if I should flee. So if the fleeing flag was set true here in this I should flee, and if the flee target is not equal to null, so that is set here, set flee target, you're going to see that all gets set uh, with the um, uh, subscriptions to events. Anyway, let's keep going. So if flee target not equal to null, and not enemy master dot is on root, and not enemy not master dot is now paused, then we check with this pool method here, if flee target output the run position and vector 3.distance is less than the flee range, so my transform.position, comma flee target.position is less than that flee range, so uh, the enemy has not gone far away enough from the player, then set the destination my nav mesh agent dot set destination run position enemy master dot call event enemy walking that'll cause the animation for walking to fire off enemy master dot is on root is equal to true and so that means they're going somewhere okay and the wander script won't try and kick in because it knows that this enemy is actually going somewhere all right so then i'll have void disable this so this dot enable is equal to false so i need to go and fill out the set initial references and update so here are my set initial references just simply enemy master git component enemy master my transform is transform and if we get component nav mesh agent and it's not null then my nav mesh agent is equal to get component nav mesh agent and the check rate is just some random value, random dot range, 0.3 to 0.4. Okay, in update, I will do that if time dot time is greater than next check, then next check is equal to time dot time plus check rate, and then fire off check if I should flee. Alright, so on, on enable, I have set initial references and event enemy die. Uh, disable this is subscribing to that event. Uh, set flee target to enemy event enemy set nav target i should flee to event enemy health low so that's one of the new ones and i should stop fleeing to event enemy health recovered that's also a new one okay and i'll just paste in the unsubscribes and that's all that's all of it okay so this is the enemy nav flee script i'll just scroll through it slowly so you can pause it and type out the code or check your code as required to make sure that you've got everything. All that happening, all that's happening really is that if the health of the enemy falls below the threshold, a special event gets fired off. This place, this script sees that. It will then disable the nav pursue script. It'll set is fleeing to true. And then it will take over the motion of the enemy and cause the enemy uh, to, well, 
find a place on the nav mesh that's suitable for running to, and then just keep running there, so long as they're not far away enough from the player, and so long as there is in fact a place on the nav mesh to run to. So if once you reach the end of the map, they'll stop moving. Okay, so that's all of it. So let's go ahead and try it out. So I'll go to my prefabs, drop in the golem for a moment. Okay, and then go to uh, enemy nav fleet and drop it in. Okay, and I'll just hit apply. Done. Okay, now I'll delete that. Save it. Hit play. Alright. Oops, I think I, I, think I killed it. Alright, so maybe that guy, there you go. There, you've got an example of one who's trying to run away. Will more want to run away? Yep, and now another one is running in the opposite direction. How about these guys? Yep. Alright, so that's another one. Oops, that was a bit too effective. So as you can see, the enemies, they run away until a certain range. That was 25 units. So for an FPS game, you probably want it like really far away, like 100 units or more. Otherwise, then the player, of course, can easily, well, shoot at them. So if I run up to an enemy, they start to flee. Now, if I made some way of increasing the enemy health, well, then I'd be able to see uh, how that looks. So why don't I do that? So let me just stop that. Then I'll go to the enemy health script, and I'll add in, just for the sake of testing only, void update. If input dot get key up key code dot say period then enemy master enemy master dot call event enemy increase health and how much should I increase that by say maybe like 70 okay so when I press the period key just for the sake of testing any enemies in the scene, their health will increase by 70. Okay, so maybe I'll change the number to spawn just to 1. Hit play. Okay, so now he's playing. So I'll look at the enemy health script. Press period. Okay, his health is now 71, he's recovered, and he's now chasing the player. So I can increase that some more, he's back to full health. Let me throw this, and now he'll run away again. Okay, so that's it, it's working pretty well. Now, an interesting thing is, if I run up too close, he will fight back. So if I run right up, bang, he will continue to attack the player. So it means keep your distance. Of course, you could make it so that you disable the enemy attack script as well. Ah, uh, but that's optional. Okay, so that's it. This was demonstrating how you can expand the system to add other behaviors. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in, I guess, the next chapter.